Hello. Welcome back. Been a little uh, one week hiatus. Been uh, busy with some other things, but waiting on some parts as well. So that was sort of another reason. But fear not. So, let's see what has changed here. So, while we went on parts, um, been fiddling with the spindle, and yeah, I think. I'm happy with uh, where I'm at and ready to, you know, proceed, um, you know, until the machine's all together and, you know, I can't, I don't know if it's realistic to try to work every bug out before uh, you run the thing. I'll be damned if I try my best though. So yeah, um, there was some heat. Uh, there were some heat problems. Uh, this would get pretty hot where the you know two tapered roller bearings are down the snout, and um, yeah, we got Kluber in there, and yeah, uh, it, my bet is or uh, coming from like a wheel bearing, you know, like a four wheel drive. Repack your Toyota wheel bearings with like more grease. Try to keep them waterproof. Go four wheel and like um, definitely learn something. Uh, it just it's shocking uh how little uh kluber uh or maybe you know some other equivalent grease but it's just doesn't seem like it would work but this thing's been running for you know several hours now um in all sorts of different rpms and yeah it hasn't exploded so i'm just gonna have to take their word for it and yeah it's pretty amazing just doesn't seem like it would, but it does. So, yeah, after that, um, pulled the spindle out and pulled some of the grease out. Like I had a bunch of, uh, had a bunch of grease built up around this. Uh, there's this big nut that you tighten right there and uh, wiped a bunch out from there. And after that, 100 degrees, it doesn't, uh, it's come down at least 20 degrees since you know, degreased. So, uh, yeah, going to proceed forward. Going to consider it uh, done for now until the machine is all dialed and uh, running. So, going to probably pivot over to the electronic side of things. But, yeah, I think it's, you know, the, the Grizzly Spindle is tricky. But I think that'll work. So here is the enclosure for, for the cabinet for all the electronics. All the holes and everything have already been done and um, it's just a matter of laying out the where everything goes. Um, the VFD, actually we'll go look at it in there, but uh, yeah, you can see the nux in there, disconnect fan, some little grates and filter things. It's going to be a pigtail uh, that comes out there with a twist lock on it so you can plug the machine in with like a drop cord or something. 220. Um, yeah, let's go over here. Uh, so yeah, um, the VFD is going to go here and sort of, uh, you know, the power supplies, there's a convenience outlet for the, um, the NUC power supply, so you can just plug the stock one in there. Um, some DIN stuff, breaker, this is the three axis integrated driver, um, smooth stepper, 
Um, and then there is a, an expansion board that piggybacks off of that. So the I.O. for that, um, you know, distribute. And this is like a really, uh, you know, it's pretty cramped. So you're not going to be able to, you know, get all bucket ass crazy with too much of this stuff. But I'm going to attempt to try to, you know, blend both, you know, zip tie and uh, this, you know. Try to make it as uh, neat and tidy as you can for, you know, what it is. Um, yeah, uh, limit switches and then uh, all the I.O. for the, uh, the inputs for all the switches on the uh, little interface on the front of the machine. Some other components. So yeah, that's uh now that the spindle's done, um head first, head first into this. So got a bunch of wire and um everything is all sort of uh, acquired and laid out. It's going to be a matter of uh screwing and gluing. So So the freak drive, it's WJ200 Hitachi. Uh Oh, uh, received uh, in the mail, uh, what is it, so RS-485 to try to do the uh, mod bus on here. I'm going to try to go down that uh, rabbit hole. So that, uh, that ought to be interesting. And I think that's about it as far as component -y kind of new stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll hit the button on here and see what it does. So this is 30 hertz, and so yeah, this is just with the uh, you know the nameplate data with the auto tune. Um, so I'm sure you know uh, you could probably quiet it up and smooth it up a bit. You know maybe failing with the carrier frequency or, or I don't know it spins right now so deal with that once uh, once we're there so yeah what was that 30 30 Hertz and this is a uh, tack let's see if I can do this with the camera So 30 hertz, I'm at 1500 RPMs. Yeah, and uh, it sounds sounds pretty good, you know? It's definitely no uh, Mori Siki, but... Oh, we gotta check this out. I had some conversation with someone about the the fans on these things and if you there's search it on the internet there's lots of things about you know the imbalance of these the uh the fan that's on there and how much noise they make and all that and i was like man this is pretty good you know it's a little wobbly but it's not bad gotta eat crow on that because yeah this thing's got like a solid i don't call it a quarter inch of wobble and when it's spinning, you know, it, it, it moves some air. It's a, a sucker, you know, you put your hand there. But, so that might be something to address down the line. But, interesting. We'll go to 60 hertz. Let's see what 45 hertz gets us on the RPMs. 
2300 at 45 hertz. So there's 60 hertz. There's 90 hertz. Let's see what we got here for. Forty-five hundred. This reading right here is the set screw or the spanner wrench hole in the, uh, the spindle. So forty-five hundred. So yeah, before removing uh, the grease, uh, you'd be hard pressed to uh, not melt the melt the grill down at a you know 90 hertz, let alone 100 hertz. Or well, that's 110. Let's see what 110 gets us. There's 54. So I think it does like five grand at 100 hertz. Is that about right? There's 100. Let's see. Yeah, yeah 49, 80. sure it's a sort of a sanity check like these IR things absolutely blow for shiny because that there's no way that that is 75 degrees it's definitely closer to the 100 degrees so um, yeah let's uh, let's pop that cover off and um, I'll talk about one small change that uh, I made to the top hat. I put some thick grease in between the bell bells, and now you can see somebody sort of slinging off. I often thought maybe you could put like some sort of uh, like a rubber thing over there, sort of to hold the grease in there. Like, so there's a reason why I haven't seen it, or maybe I just haven't seen it. But yeah, you can sort of hear that the tick, tick, tick of that little uh, high shoulder on the belt right there. But I'm happy, man. Got the cover off, and here it is. Pardon the horrible flashlight light. I know, professional. Um, top hat. It's 
the right there. I added a set screw that just, uh, it's a tiny little number eight, and uh, it just sets into the top of the aluminum pulley, and yeah, just snugged up. Probably not necessary, but you can never have too many set screws, I suppose. Oh yeah, and uh, on the belt too, this was from that other video, the Micro B, the nice looking one, and it's nice, but this little flaw thing right there, like you can hear it every time it's right there. It's like a high spot on the belt that sort of squeaks a little bit, but I'm sure it'll bed in. So I think that's about all. Um, So yeah, the next step is to start doing some wiring. So thanks for watching and thumbs up if you like, subscribe, and we'll catch you here shortly. We're going to start busting out on the uh, enclosure here, so get ready.